Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me for our devotion uh, this week. Today we're reading from Job chapter 40, and we're going to be reading verses 6 to 9. Job 40, 6 to 9. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind, Get ready to answer me like a man. When I question you, you will inform me. Would you really challenge my justice? Would you declare me guilty to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's? Can you thunder with a voice like his? Now we know Job had quite a, a tragic um, turn of events that happened to him. And after this, he starts to doubt God and God's ability and God's love towards him and all the rest of this. And then it's time for God to answer. And he actually answers in verse 38. It starts his response from then. But this is, this is the significant passage I want to focus on today. God asks Job, would you really declare me guilty to justify yourself? And this is the point that I want to have a look at this morning. Are we going to contend with a sovereign God for his sovereignty? <laughs> Are we really going to make him guilty, make him wrong, make him bow down before me? Because what I want must go or what I feel is justice what I feel is righteousness God must listen to that now let me take a more subtle example for those of you who have been following the news I'm sure you would have seen this attempted assassination on uh, Donald Trump lots of people are talking about the miraculous turning of his head just as uh, the, the bullet was fired uh, and I'm not I'm not a firearms expert but Lots of people are on, lots of people have actually made uh, videos and uh, uh, illustrations that show the trajectory of the bullet and where it would have hit the back of his head. He turned his head at the last minute and it just whizzed past. Lots of people said that was divine intervention, that was God's hand that managed to move his head just in time. Now, perhaps we can understand the sentiment, but theologically that's incorrect. God doesn't have to intervene at times uh, in the world because something is going wrong. God has ordained what happens in the world for today, and God has allowed what happens in the world for uh, for it to be hap- for it to happen, for it to be allowed. Uh, we look at Job. Satan comes to God and asks him permission to, you know, give Job a hard time, and God grants it. So we must be careful of things like this. For myself, well, God told me that, you know, we, we need to, I don't know, we need to pray more for ESCOM. That's an, that's an issue. Did God really tell you that? Are you, are you not telling God that, or are you speaking for God saying that if we pray more for ESCOM, that's a righteous thing? And, you know, that's going to get him to move his divine sovereign hand. God is divine. God is sovereign. We are not sovereign. Are we going to declare him guilty to justify ourselves? Can be big things. Maybe we're in an adulterous relationship. No, God understands the struggles I had. No, he, he doesn't understand the struggles you have. Well, he does, but he understands them as sin because that's what he has said. It is sin. And on the subtler side of things, we, we say things like, God intervened to save President Trump by moving his head a little bit which is also incorrect because God doesn't have to intervene. God is in control. This is the, this is the, the crux of it. Are we going to believe that God is sovereign or are we going to believe that God you know, intervenes when he, when he feels that it's necessary? Both we admit that God is powerful, that God can do that, but there's a significant difference on the issue of sovereignty. Do we believe that God is totally in control and knows that everything happens and allows everything to happen or permits everything to happen? That's not to say that God is going to send a, a tornado to purposely go and kill people because that's that's what people say. Well, God's um, an evil God then if he does that. But again, are we going to make him guilty to justify ourselves? It's not about us. It's not about us, our morality. It's not about our righteousness. It's about he who is sovereign or him who is sovereign rather. The significant difference comes in with the issue of sovereignty. We must, must, must take a higher view of God's sovereignty if we're going to 
uh, want to serve him and be obedient to him as best as we should, if we're going to want to read his word and, and apply his word as best as we should, we need to take a higher view of his sovereignty. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this word to us this morning. Forgive us where we've seen you as interfering at times in uh, in the world and in history, when in actual fact you have been in control of history the entire time. It is not by chance that the history of Israel uh, up to the point of Jesus was just an accident and you sent, you managed to find a time when it was right to intervene. Father, forgive us where we think that um, we can get away with things because you'll understand or we make you bow down to us because we think we are sovereign. Forgive us, I pray. Help us to take a higher view of your sovereignty. Help us to take you at your word. Help us to know that you are God Almighty, God in control of everything, God who is um, a Lord over everything, God who has authority over everything, God who permits things to happen and doesn't permit things to happen. Lord, help us also not to to get cross and angry with you when things happen around us. Because we, who are we? Job says, I'm insignificant. And it's true, we are insignificant. We don't have authority. We don't have sovereignty. You do. And yet, uh, despite all of that, you still loved us and show us grace every single day. And we, we just worship you and we adore you for that. Thank you that you have sovereignly Um, chosen us and called us uh, to to your kingdom and to be your children. We, We bless you and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.